loving that Windows 8, I gotta say. I think there's a lot that we can do, there's a lot that you can do, and most importantly, there's just a ton our customers will do uh, to, uh, to really drive forward with the incredible capability packed in the Windows 8 platform. But before we get back to questions, there's one more thing we'd like to show. Just one more thing. One more new device, new experience in the Windows 8 family. Uh, we're going to announce today, uh, you'll see a press release that says that we're acquiring a company called Perceptive Pixel. Perceptive Pixel is a leader in large-scale multi-touch and stylus displays. And when you couple the PPI large touch and dis stylus displays with great PCs from our OEM partners, it really opens up new possibilities for business, for education, for productivity, for learning, and for collaboration. And I'll tell you, we got a lot of work to do to bring the prices down and have them be more accessible and more affordable. But we do want to show you the work we'll be bringing to market from Perceptive Pixel. And to do that today, please welcome on stage Jeff Hahn, founder of Perceptive Pixel and a new Microsoft employee. Jeff. Wow. Wow. Can you hear me? Wow, thanks so much, Steve. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here, to be able to participate live in person uh, in the context of this morning's announcement between our two companies. You know, I found the Perceptive Pixel a little over six years ago, specifically with a mission to see how advanced technologies like multi-touch, like stylus, like gestures, could specifically benefit the knowledge worker. How these technologies, how these rich experiences could actually help us get real work done. Now, when you think of productivity, what do you think of? You think of things like meeting rooms, conference rooms, workstations, uh, whiteboards, post-it notes up on a wall, ideation, design charrettes, all these things revolve around larger surfaces. Now, it's no surprise then, if you look back at our rich history of products, that they've all tended to uh, congregate around larger displays, like this one. This is actually our flagship product. It's an 82-inch, the world's largest true multi-touch and stylus display in the world. It's been shipping for about a year now. Uh, it is really incredible. It's the largest display you could get, that's why we made it 82 inches. Full HD, handles hundreds of multi-touch points at the same time. It's truly unlimited. It's also covered with the world's largest piece of Gorilla Glass, 82-inch diagonal, two millimeters thin. That means it allows you to get it really rugged like this, which is great for enterprise scenarios, but also means you can actually really feel like you're actually touching the graphics on the display, which is really critical, a real enterprise class experience. This is, of course, connected. There's an HP workstation behind there connected. It could be, of course, any other business class PC. And because of that, it runs Win8, and that's what's awesome. Let me just uh, show you by being able to log in and uh, use my picture password here and be able to, of course, just see the Windows 8 uh, start screen. Now, just before we can get started, it is so cool how the Windows 8 design language, the Metro design language, just works as is. It scales not just from your mobile device and your Slate device, but all the way up to a wall-sized device, just as is. It's really remarkable design. You can see just at its, on its own, I love having this as my office, just as an ambient information appliance. You can see all the live tiles, you know, rotating, updating. I can see my stocks. I can see the news. I can see the Wimbledon results. I can see uh, a great little information uh, uh, kind of display here that's just great to have running but of course because it's Win8 all the Win8 apps just work as is so of course I can of course bring up maps and look at how nice and fluid this interface is it really is an incredibly <laughs> fluid and rich experience you can see how nice it is and again, this is exactly the same apps you're used to that we just saw up there with Tammy, but the experience just becomes something even better when it's on a large screen like this. It's, no, it's the same apps, not just having a personal uh, consumption device, but something that indeed I can use collaboratively for an audience like this. Of course, I can bring up a browser, and it's great to see how great Internet Explorer, again, really been reinvented from the ground up to be touched and have all this great subpixel rendering. Um, I can bring up uh, other sites as well. It's really exciting to see this kind of thing. It really changes your mind about how you can actually use these kind of devices for doing presentations, for collaborating, for actually presenting information to a wide audience. Um, 
it's a great large display, of course, so it's always great to be able to show video. It is nice to have one of these in the office, and we see these as replacements for <laughs> anywhere you might actually have a conference uh, or projection screen. Uh, it's nice. We will have one of these in our offices very, very soon. <laughs> so, of course, what's great about it being Windows is, of course, all your normal desktop applications just work out of the box. For instance, uh, I can bring up OneNote here. And OneNote is great. It's our digital uh, note-taking tool. And it was originally designed for Slate devices. But it's really amazing how well OneNote on its own just works with large devices like this. So it's really cool to be able to be able to take notes and be able to mark this up. And let's say we're in a, uh, we have one of these in our office and we're uh, together doing a project review. And of course, I can just instantly start marking this up and say, yep, yeah, that's good, that's good. This is what I want to focus on here, and this is really important. Now, you notice just InkNote just works, uh, uh, OneNote just works great right out of the box. But it's not just pen enabled, it's also touch enabled. That's what's really cool. I can actually just use touch and be able to not just mark this up, but indeed start a new ideation session here and be able to just work seamlessly between manipulating content and being able to author it as well. It's really compelling, it's really profound, because we've seen touch devices before. Touch is great for content manipulation, but it's not so great for content authoring. The stylus is fantastic for that. But there are very few devices that actually have both simultaneously. It's really profound to be able to have, do both at the same time, because I literally have one hand allocated to the, the, the authoring function, and my other hand, the non-dominant hand, to the manipulation function. And that, uh, that it's, it's, quite, it's, it's shown that it's quite a, a great division of labor mentally, so much so that this interface starts actually disappearing and I actually start getting immersed, not so much the fact that this is a computer or a display, but that I'm actually just working naturally on my data or on my content. So it's really, really exciting. Uh, of course, we can just use this purely as a digital whiteboard. All this stuff just works out of the box like that. It's very exciting. Um, now, collaboration isn't just co-located like this. It's also uh, a standard part of business nowadays to, of course, have remote collaboration going. So Link, of course, just also works right out of the box. Uh, I can click on uh, and start a meeting like this. And for the sake of time, I won't go able to do that. But it's very important to understand the different types of collaboration that are going to be possible with devices like this. So I've shown you the most advanced touch hardware on the market. I've shown you how it just runs Win8 out of the box. I've shown you how all the Office apps just work as is. Uh, we at Perceptive Pixel, of course, been investigating some even more interesting scenarios that could complement the Office applications. So let me show you one of those right now. This is an application we call Storyboard. It was designed for users to be able to make a really quick ad hoc presentation out of your existing assets. You can see it's a very touch-friendly interface like this. And let me just tap on one of these to get going. Uh, you can see what I've done here is already imported a lot of my PowerPoints, some of my brochures, some photos, some documents out here. And what I can easily just do is press play and, of course, be able to have a nice, touch-friendly experience to actually go through my slide deck like that. Very nice. These are all live, actual data types as well. So these are embedded maps and other rich uh, types like that. Here's our uh, manufacturing facilities uh, over in Portland. We actually do all of our manufacturing here in the U.S. It's very, very exciting. Now, what's really cool, though, is... <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> really have a rock star set of teams that uh, really manufacture stuff from the ground up. Now, what's really cool is, of course, I can always just random access and decide to jump to another point in, the, uh, in my presentation. Um, and we want to go a little bit further than that. How many times have you actually had to go do a presentation you have backup slides? Well, I always do. And the reason for that is that you actually want to be reactive and responsive to how your audience is actually being engaged. So one of the really cool parts about Storyboard is this mode here, where I can actually show a flow graph and make a nonlinear presentation here. So for instance, what I can do is, all right, well, starting from here, and maybe after this, I actually want to branch up there depending on if I need to at the time or not, and be able to actually have a nonlinear narrative. So again, when I press play, instead of just going here or here, I can decide to actually have maybe a much more multimedia-rich presentation. Uh, or I can say, no, actually, people want to dive a little bit more into some of the election work we've been doing. Uh, this is familiar stuff to you guys. We've actually are quite well known for transforming the way broadcasters have broken down the elections. Uh, or. Maybe I can jump into some of our more researchy work that we've done. Innovation and pen and touch is really going to be the next big thing. 
or I can dive into perhaps some of our uh, more technical research papers that we published. Uh, so really amazing versatility in a device like this to be able to really transform the way we actually work and present uh, in an office setting. So I'm just showing the tip of the iceberg here. I'm really, really excited about some of the new things we're working on, how it's going to be integrated into future versions of Office. Uh, I'm also super excited about how much aggressive energy we're going to spend in getting this kind of hardware down to much more accessible levels, because really there's no reason why a device like this shouldn't be in every conference room, in every office, in every classroom. Thanks so much for having me.